head and we'll go online again. And we'll bring up the remote access view. Okay, so we'll go to the second screen and we share toggle button. We'll press it the same way. Press it and hold it. Notice it changes state once. I let go. Press and hold again. We change state once. I let go. Good. So we see the two nets, the two buttons on the HMI operate the same way. <clears throat> but there's a little difference in the in the latter. Now there's really, again, uh, we can come up with probably hundreds of different ways to do these things. Uh, these uh, these six examples we built are kind of the most basic and really, uh, as far as understanding goes, some of the most important as far as programming uh, PLCs and LPLCs go. Uh, first off, we take advantage of some of the advanced functions, but understanding the scan, the system scan, is very important. Um, the idea of the single transitional elements, the single scan transitional elements, the positive and negative contacts when they are activated, and the set and the reset, they require only one scan to activate, as well as a toggle. Uh, these are very important. Uh, we, need, we can continue on with these uh, as when we are activating our more advanced function blocks. But as far as the control goes, the logic is going to be pretty much exactly the same way. If we want to use a single transition on something, we can use a positive or negative transition. If we have an element that needs to be activated only once, we can use the same control as we did with our set or reset or our toggle. Um, okay, so that, that concludes the portion of uh, the webinar where we want to build, uh, build our examples here. Uh, I will have these available, this program, and hopefully the recording of the webinar and a write-up of what we did. Uh, and I guess we, we can email it to everyone that participated. Um, but does anyone have any questions now? I think uh, I've been trying to answer them as we go on. But if anyone wants to ask anything specifically, uh, please go ahead and we'll try and answer them. Uh, maybe Jason can type answers and I can talk. Uh, any other comments? Thank you, by the way, for bearing with us through technical difficulty in my coughing. <laughs> um, this is, again, the first uh, webinar we've done on the, on the larger scale with the software. Uh, so just a couple of kinks to work out, but I think it worked uh, fairly well. Uh, if you want to send any feedback to support at unitronics.com, that would be more than appreciated, uh, good, bad, or, uh, or anything, really. Um, okay. Okay, does anyone have any, you see the data table question, maybe we won't answer that quite at this moment. Does anyone have any questions pertaining to the examples that we've gone over or any other uh, functions that might be relative to these? No. Okay. Um, I just want to point out that whenever you're, uh, you're working with these, one thing I wanted to show also was the, uh, the help file. Um, so there's, there's two other things we can take a look at real quick. Uh, if we go ahead and move left here, we have brands. Uh, this is our Operam browser. Now we've dealt with memory bits specifically. Uh, we notice when we click our memory bits, we'll see uh, all the descriptions we typed. Um, and what we have here at the use box, uh, this is where we will uh, get our next unused or uh, available uh, memory bit from. So in all the uh, examples we did here when we're assigning to a bit, we press this get next unused address. Uh, the system is looking in this box here in this description, uh, I'm sorry, in this uh, column for the use. If it's checked off, we will not grab it from the in use. Uh, how do you determine if something is in use? Well, first you link it to something or we can give it a description. So if we want to take memory bit 15 out of the system, we can just type uh, temp here hit enter, we notice that now memory bit 15 is out. So if we want to reserve a vector or a, a list of memory bits in a row, we can use this uh, to take it out of use. And it's important to understand that when we get the next unused, uh, we don't want to accidentally grab something uh, that is in use or we intend to use in the system. So if we need memory bit 14, 15, and 16 uh, as in use in the system, we should plan it out and give them uh, a quick description, really anything in that field we'll take it out of use. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention was all the other operand types. 
So we dealt specifically with Boolean uh, with memory bit. So Boolean will be one or zero. Uh, again, a bit has a state of either high or low or one or zero. Uh, other Boolean operand examples. Oops, clicking the wrong buttons here. That's okay. We'll fix that later. Uh, inputs can be high and low. Outputs can be high and low. Uh, timers, when we work with them, uh, their bit value will either be high or low. Um, we'll explain those uh, in the webinar in two weeks. We'll deal with timers. Uh, memory bits we worked with. Uh, so the next question I see is X bits. The X denotes uh, the system memory. So like you can think of the cache on the die of your uh, CPU and your computer versus the RAM in, uh, in your RAM slot. The X uh, uh, the X variables or X uh, operands are basically faster access uh, memory. Um, we don't have to worry about them right now, but if we're doing something with a high-speed calculation or a high-speed subroutine, we can use those. Um, we will talk about memory integers and longs and double words and all these other um, operands in later webinars. But uh, just to quickly say, memory integers are where we hold values. Memory longs, we can hold values. So a memory bit is a single bit. Uh, a memory integer, for example, is a 16-bit value. So we can hold uh, a binary representation of, of a value, of uh, a 16-bit value. Um, okay, so we'll talk about those more in subsequent course. Um, Okay, any other question pertaining to this example? No? Okay, I can also um, mention that if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, our email address is support at unitronics.com, uh, or you can feel free to give us a phone call as well. Um, There's a question about Modbus. Can you access the memory bits across Modbus? Yes, there is. Uh, we can look at uh, the Modbus uh, examples and sections. But uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was if you hit F1, you bring up the Help menu. Now, Help menu, uh, I think, does a good job of explaining a lot of uh, functions here. Uh, specifically, if we go to Search and uh, search for sequence. What we want to bring up is the program sequence. This is uh, something I would advise everyone who's, who is working with the PLC to read and try and understand. It explains the program scan and how it works. Uh, so we read the physical inputs, we create a memory table, then we run into the ladder, we'll execute our ladder, and then we update our HMI and our outputs. Uh, it's a little more to it than that, and as you start working with more functions, uh, it'll become uh, maybe not more obvious, but more uh, <coughs> intuitive of what is working. But if you have a question on how the program scan is working, I would highly advise reading this section on, uh, again, it's program sequencing. So the question, does the integration of the HMI allow for much quicker screen update times? Uh, I can say compared to a system where you have to set up communication and maybe Modbus tags, uh, the answer to that would be probably yes. Um, it takes between one and eight scans in general to update the HMI. Uh, and uh, an example of a program scan time, if we want to take a look at the 570 we're working with right now, we can look at the system manager here. System manager zero. I'm in the online mode again, and I can view all of the <coughs> all the values of the registers. Now, system manager uh, zero holds the current scan time. Uh, it's obviously not zero, but it's less than one millisecond. So the update time uh, to update uh, our HMI is is probably one to two milliseconds in this case. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and I can say as well, having an integrated HMI in a controller makes learning uh, much easier as well. We don't have to set up a simulation board to work with, with lights and buttons. We can do everything, or not everything, but a lot of things we want to do right on the HMI, uh, just like we did in this example here. Okay, so there's also a question about <clears throat> this warning we have, changing a bit value and then reading the value in the same net is not recommended, use STL to uh, confirm logic. Uh, this is pertaining to the net we built right here where we are checking the value of a bit um, in the same net. Uh, in this case, the, the warning would be helpful if we were doing something uh, that, that we might be causing a problem with. Because we have only a single scan, we can only activate either the set or the reset. If we set, set up a net that would say output to MB12 and then we would expect to use that, that output, that new changed output in the same net, uh, that's an example of why we want to break things up into two nets. We want to do a calculation of MB12 here and then we want to take its output else here. Uh, that would be better than saying uh, trying to build two separate nets. Um, so as, I guess as an example would be like this. We would have two separate ideas in the same net, two different rungs in the same net. And that's really what the warning is trying to avoid us doing uh, because we probably won't get the intended output uh, from our net. In this example, uh, we are doing exactly what we intend to. So you notice that this is a warning and not specifically an error. If we had an error, it wouldn't allow us to download. Um, that's what this warning is referring to. Okay, so I think we wrapped up the questions here. Uh, again, we will have the notes and the program available. Um, as well, if anyone has ideas or, or suggestions that they'd like to see in webinars, uh, this is something we'd like to continue doing in the future. Uh, we will have one next week on basic Ethernet setup uh, and, and connecting the controller to the network and how to access it through various uh, applications we offer on our website and uh, different communications options. Um, the week after that, we'll be doing uh, the basics on timers. Uh, so these are uh, these are kind of uh, things we'd like to keep progressing with. Uh, if you have any ideas or, or suggestions, please send us an email to support at unitronics.com and we'll try and uh, build those into our, our schedule. Um, okay. okay, I guess if no one has any other questions, I, we can wrap that up here. Uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs>